Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. It's uh, good to see some smiling faces. Um, well, there's very few things in my life these days that uh, force me to put a suit coat on. Um, and uh, thankfully, one of them's here today. But um, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be able to do the introduction and welcome uh, this morning. Um, 2011, this really big... Uh, kind of slow talking kid walked into our into our uh, organization and you knew that he was going to make an impact uh, on the football field and it took him a little while to get going but man did he ever do that um, obviously uh, as he retires and moves on with his career um, you know one of the all-time greats on the football field to ever wear the purple and gold um, you never you never get into a career you know when you came here to to think that that's how it's going to end up but you could tell with the way he worked, how diligent he was, how much he cared about his teammates, the people in the building, that he was just different. Um, and it was an honor for me as a veteran at that time to kind of help show him the ropes on community give back, outreach, what it's like to talk to the community and, and really interact and be a part of it. And uh, you know he did that and then some times 10. I mean, there are a few athletes that come through communities that make an impact, like the way Kyle, Jordan, and the family have made and uh, you know, truly special to watch him as a big brother um, type figure for him is just to, to watch and just be so proud of all the things he's accomplished on the field, off the field, in our community. Truly amazing. Um, you know, it's I look at it now and just look at his beautiful family, look at where he's at, unbelievable career, um, and all the things he's accomplished, all the folks he's impacted. Uh, just so proud uh, to call him a teammate, a brother, a friend for life. Um, so without further ado, one of the all-timers, Kyle Rudolph. Thanks, Chad. Uh, it, it means a lot to me to have Chad as the one to introduce me today. As Chad mentioned, uh, he was the first person who took me under his wing when I got here during the 2011 lockout season. So there wasn't OTAs to meet new teammates. There wasn't mini camp. Uh, there were no coaches or players to be around to find your way. And he was the first person to take me under his wing, not only on the football field, but as he mentioned, in the community, teaching me what it means to be a man to represent this organization far more than just on the football field. So Chad, I, I greatly appreciate everything you've done for me and for my career. You know, I, I'm filled with a mixture of emotions as I stand up here today because I never really got this far in my dreams. Uh, I never envisioned what the end would be like. And today I officially get to retire as a Minnesota Viking, closing the chapter on a journey that has meant everything to me. From the moment I put on the purple and gold, I knew I was a part of something special. The Minnesota Vikings are not just a team, they're a family. Together we've laughed, we've cried, we've triumphed, and we've faced adversity. To all my coaches, all of my coaches, I had a lot of them, thank you for your guidance, your wisdom, your unyielding belief in me, to my teammates, my team, I, I could stand up here and I was told that I'm not allowed to spend 45 minutes like Brian Robinson did. Um, so I, I have to keep it short, but to every single person that I shared the locker room with, that's what it's all about. It means the world to me. I can't thank you enough for your brotherhood, your support, and all the memories I'll cherish forever. To the fans, You've been the heartbeat of my career. Your unwavering support, your cheers, your letters, we all know about the letters. Your love for the game has fueled me year after year. You've not only supported me as a player, but you've embraced me and my family as one of your own. To the Will family, your leadership and commitment to excellence is unparalleled. The dedication you've shown to winning a championship and ensuring that we had every resource possible has been nothing short of exceptional. I've been very privileged 
to play under such passionate and caring leaders. To Rick Spielman, thank you for seeing something in me as a young kid from Notre Dame to give me the opportunity to be a part of this storied franchise. Your belief in me changed the trajectory of my life, and for that I am forever grateful. Rob Brzezinski, I see you sneaking in the back there. While you might work behind the scenes, your contributions haven't gone unnoticed. Your expertise and dedication played a pivotal role in keeping me here in Minnesota for a long time and ensuring that our talented core remained together for a while, allowing us to strive for greatness. Your silent but impactful influence is deeply appreciated. To the equipment staff, training staff, and the entirety of our sports support staff, the unsung heroes of the game. I owe you a tremendous debt of gratitude. You were there day in and day out, ensuring that I had everything I needed to be the best version of myself. The hard work and countless hours you put in behind the scenes have been the foundation of our collective success. I extend a heartfelt thank you to my agents who are here today from Athletes First while agent is the official title, it hardly encompasses what they mean to me. At Athletes First, they talk about the Athletes First family, but even the term family seems too limited to describe the depth of our bond. They've been my allies, my support system, my advocates, guiding me not just in my professional journey, but in life. As I step away from the game that I love, I do so with my held, head held high, knowing that I gave it everything I had. It was never about me, but always the 10 other guys I was on the field with. I look back with gratitude for the lessons the game of football has taught me. Football has shaped me into the man, the husband, the father, and member of this community that I am today. It has taught me about perseverance, teamwork, humility, and the pursuit of excellence. Finally, I want to thank my family. You've been my rock, my inspiration, and my constant source of strength. I couldn't have done this without you, and I love you guys. My journey as a player may be ending, but my connection to this game, the organization, and most certainly this community is everlasting. Thank you, Minnesota. It's been an incredible ride. And with that, I will answer questions. I almost made it. Uh, what is your favorite memory? You say you didn't expect to get to this point, but I'm sure that you spent a lot of time thinking back. And what is the favorite moment? Um, for me, it's, it's so hard over a decade to, to pick one moment, one play, one game. Um, over the last few months when I've been asked entering retirement, you know, my, my one favorite, and I always pick the Saints game in New Orleans, and the reason why I pick it, the reason why that's my favorite has nothing to do with catching the actual game-winning touchdown. Um, but ultimately, what ensued thereafter, uh, leaving the field, walking out the tunnel, going into the locker room, it was just, it was one of those games, you know, you, you finish the regular season, you go into the playoffs, and at that point, your, your season can end at any time. And I remember sitting in, in Zim's team, team meeting on that Wednesday, and we went through our, you know, keys to victory. What do we have to do to go to New Orleans to beat Drew Brees, Sean Payton, New Orleans Saints in the Superdome in the playoffs, which is not easy. And how really no one that was outside of this building believed we had a chance. But every player, coach, staff member, they believed in us and they bought in. So that Sunday afternoon, after overtime in the locker room, it was kind of just the, the culmination of everybody's hard work, you know, every, all the effort that everyone put in that, again, I was just, I happened to be the person that was in the position to make a play to end the game. And 
it was just so much fun for me to be able to celebrate with everyone at that time. Kyle, how did the, uh, the Fox Radio thing come about, and how long have you known, or do you know for sure you want to go into media? Or yeah, so I, I'm a rookie all over again. Um, so I'm just trying to cut my teeth. Um, I'll have the Fox Sports Radio weekly show. And then starting in October, I'll be able to do games for NBC on Peacock. Um, I actually have a Gophers game in November. So uh, a few big Big Ten games throughout the course of the year to get in the booth um, and do it on that side as well, which is where, where I would like to be. Um, hopefully I'm good at it and they give me a chance to do it. Uh, but that it to me, it allows me to be within an arm's length from the game. Uh, I've played this game since I was five years old, and to think that now that my playing career is over, I can just kind of shut that part of my life off and, and not scratch that itch, as they say. So I feel like being in the booth gives me a great opportunity to still – my first USFL game I called, John Filippo was the head coach, McLeod Bethel Thompson was the quarterback. Um, you know, So it's like I, I can still see people. I, I've made so many incredible relationships throughout my playing career. And, you know, when you're in that role on TV, it allows you to bounce around and see a lot of people that I've met over the years. How long was it uh, important to you? I, I know this somewhat speaks for itself, but important to you to retire a Viking? I, I, I mean, I, I joked around a few times that I was, you know, you look at my career and, and that's what I was. Um, obviously spent the majority of my career here. Um, it, it meant everything for me. You know, I had the opportunity to go play for two other great organizations, but um, just what this organization means to me, and, and I, I said it in my opening comments, that it's far more than just an organization and a team. It's a family. Um, and, you know, the Wolves were always very adamant, especially after my time here was over, that I was always a member of this family. And, you know, when it was time to time to call it a career and all was said and done, I wanted it to be in purple. Kylie, you talked about the impact that Chad made on you. What does it mean that you have been Chad to other players and, and you might not be playing right now, but there are lots of guys around the league that you impacted? It means I got old quick. Um, but it's, I think it's what makes pro football so special. Um, you know, we were all rookies at some point, and we all come into this league having no idea what to expect. And there's always great guys like Chad in the locker room that are willing to, you know, stick their arm out and, and take you under their wing. And so for me, I just kind of felt a, a, a debt to the guys that came after me. And I had so many guys that allowed me to become the player and person that I was during my time as a as a player here that, um, you know, I was doing a disservice to the younger guys if I wasn't that resource for them as well. Uh, you mentioned uh, Rob messing with the salary cap to keep everybody together, but it's kind of unusual that, you know, that group from kind of 2015 on stayed together. Uh, I guess what, what did what did those guys mean to you? You know, the, the Kendricks and, mm -hmm. you know, Barr and all, all those guys who were there for that long. We were – Extremely fortunate. I mean, we had an incredible core group of guys who, you know, it, it really started, you know, I think back, I got here in 11, um, Harrison in 12, and then, um, you know, Barr in 14, and Kendrick, so on and so forth. But it really started with the guys that were, you know, already here when I got here, Chad is one of them, um, you know, from that 2014 season, where we went seven and nine, probably lost a couple games that we should have won, and then ultimately, you know, going to the playoffs the following year for the first time. Um, you know, it was the standard that those guys set that taught all of us younger guys who really had not figured it out and knew how to win. Those were all guys that had been to an NFC Championship game and knew what it took to to win in this league. And then it was that group of. 10 guys or so that were together all those years. And we just kept adding high quality human beings that were really good football players, uh, ultimately with the same goal in mind to win a championship. Um, I think we had a really unique situation here where almost every player that we drafted 
over those years, signed a second contract and stayed here. And they all stayed here because of that ultimate goal, trying to be the, the first team to win a championship. What's it like to show um, your children what this place means to you and then the reception you get when you come back? Yeah, it's funny. Um, the girls remember coming to games here and, and being around here. They asked if the dragon breathes fire again because they remember when it used to breathe fire and then with all the pyro issues in the NFL, we had to, had to cut that out. So the dragon still does not breathe fire. Um, so they remember. They remember game day here. They remember Victor. Um, they remember all that important stuff. Um, Henry was one in 2019, the, the last time we had fans in the stadium when I was here. So in 20, he, he didn't come to any games. Uh, and then Crosby was born in New York City. So he definitely doesn't remember and will probably remember none of this. Um, but the kids even, you know, flying in last night, being around the hotel in Minneapolis, now, they always ask why people talk to me and why they care about me. Um, they always ask why people come up and, uh, you know, why do so many people know who I am? And they get it. They know why. Uh, the boys do not. And so it, it means a lot to me that at least the older three will, will know how special this place is to us and will always be to us. And you know, constantly bringing them back around. I was able to bring Henry to to a practice this summer, and um, he absolutely loved it. So it's it's extremely important to me that you know we're a Vikings family. You know, we'll we'll grow up. They will grow up purple and gold, and um, that's very important to me. I know you mentioned it a little bit, but just the Children's Hospital and. I mean, there's plenty of families and people that you met during your time here who maybe aren't even football fans mm -hmm. that you left an impact with. What, is, what does that mean to leave that legacy? Uh, I think making a difference and leaving a legacy off the field will go significantly further than the touchdowns I caught on the field and the games we won on the field. Um, you know, kind of during this whole process with the announcement becoming official, uh, we saw a lot of old videos and were reminded of a lot of families that meant a lot to us. Um, you know, and unfortunately for us, the amount of time that we spent at the hospital, the families we got closest with were, you know, a lot of the sickest patients and, and aren't here with us today. Um, but they're people that have made a far bigger impact on on my life and our life as a family than we can ever make on theirs. Uh, our goal was always just to give them a couple hours of happiness and you know give them an escape from all the adversity and and challenges that they were facing at that time. Have you uh, gotten to know TJ Hawkinson mm -hmm. at all? Yeah, so I, I mentioned I came this summer for a uh, mini camp practice, and then I was here for a training camp practice as well. Uh, followed his career when he was on the other team in the division. Uh, super talented kid, you know, both him and Josh. You know, to have two guys in that room that, that can play really, really high level football, uh, it's a ton of fun as a former tight end to, to see. And the position is in far better hands now than it was when I was here. <laughs> Do you, you go to that tight end, you, or did you go to that? I have not gone yet. Uh, they're on me now. Now I become a counselor, I think. Like, <laughs> so I need to get down there at some point. It's hard. It's in the summer, though, and I don't want to leave here in the summertime, especially go to Nashville where it's hot. I joke that you became old. Like, but did, it, did it go by fast? So fast. Um, you know, I, I really meant it in my opening statement that I, I never got this far. I never thought about this. Um, you know, my ultimate goal was to just play in this league at some point. And then when I was fortunate enough to, to live that dream as a player, I did everything I could to stay here and, and stay in this league and remain in this league as long as I could. And I never really thought about what the end would be like. And so, you know, quite honestly, I really didn't even want to be up here um, because I can't have all the people that I that truly got me here today with me. Um, but our good friend Tom West and everyone at the Vikings were adamant on how important this is that I, I do it. And so I just really had never planned it out. I had never thought this far. 
Um, and I certainly would have never got here without the hundreds of people who have helped me along the way. Does it feel weird that Chris Thomason is asking you questions? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's not quite the same. <laughs> Get him on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure he has my phone number. <laughs> All good? Yeah, my last question. Well, I guess just what are your thoughts about being at the game Sunday and just sort of what that will mean and taking all that in? It'll be different. Um, I've gone to plenty of Notre Dame games as a former player or, you know, elder high school games as a former player. Uh, but this will be my my first NFL game as a former player in in a in a place that not only means a ton to me but to my family. It's the it, you know it was number one this year. It's it's the greatest environment and atmosphere in, in NFL football. And to have the opportunity to be there, although it will be weird, uh, we're extremely excited to to get the opportunity to, to be there and, and to be at the game. So we're really looking forward to. Getting to spend that that moment together as a family, uh, like I said, the the older kids remember U.S. Bank Stadium, and Henry's in for a treat because I think he's going to really enjoy it. And as far as your your efforts um, with philanthropy going forward, mm -hmm. you know you're not retiring from that. <laughs> so um, what way have cooking? No. Um, as I mentioned, you know, making an impact off the field goes significantly further than the touchdowns that you catch on the field or the, the games that we win. And uh, f for me, it's just part of the fabric of who I am and what I want to do. And, uh, you know, I, I've tried to not only make a difference myself, but now also help others who are just as passionate as I am. Um, th there's far more than just football experience that I can pass down to, to younger players, not only on this team, but across the league and, and across sports. Um, you know, I had mentioned that it's kind of the, the nature of, of our industry where guys put their arm around you and they mentor you as a football player. And um, if, if I can now be someone that mentors a lot of these young players and helps them with the opportunity to make a difference, whether it be in the community that they play in, the community that they live in, where they're from, where they went to school. Um, you know, it's just, it's about more than just making a difference myself, but allowing others to make a difference as well. Awesome, thank you guys for everything. It was a pleasure.